Hello and welcome back to the Entertain House YouTube channel. Tonight's video is so exciting. It's a moment that I've been waiting for my whole life. We've been there in 2009. We've been there in 2001 when I was just a two-year-old boy. But now I'm a 22-year-old. I'm excited. I've got my jersey on. I've got plenty of guests tonight as I do my NRL Grand Final Preview. Obviously, last year in 2021, we didn't get to attend the Grand Final. It was played up at Suncorp, um, and I remember doing a match preview with BKR Sport and Tryline Podcast. But tonight, I'm joined by a quarter of Sportshed TV, which is Norman, uh, who has been on the channel before. Welcome, Norman. Hey, Aiden. How's it going? Uh, how's it going, everyone? Hope everyone's doing well and excited. Um, yeah, one, one third of Sportshed TV is three of us, but say what? Could be a quarter because the fans are part of it. So, um, yeah, really excited. I hope Harry gets the job done just for the sake of Harry fans. I've been waiting a very long time. Excited well, let's hope so. We've got John returning from last year. Obviously, me and John uh, collaborated with some bets as well. A few of our bets got up, so we can't wait to provide some bets later on. How have you been, John? Good, mate. Good to be back on. Love what you guys do, uh, everyone. There's not a lot of, um, uh, you know, content creators getting into sport in Sydney and Australia, so it's awesome to um, jump on again. Yeah, it's very exciting. And finally, we've got Hold the Ball. You may have seen him up at Magic Round. He's got a fantastic channel. If you haven't seen it, go and check it out. How are you doing tonight, Hold the Ball? Yeah, bro, I'm good. I'm ready for today. And again, hey, brothers, how you guys are going? Um, also, as a Warriors fan, man, very envious of where you are. I'll just say that much. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got I got normal sports ground behind me, bro. We're not far behind you. All right, well, let's let's get straight into it. Let's start with the team list. Obviously, uh, we could speak about the odds as well, which is the Penrith Panthers going up against the Parramatta Eels. If you have been living under a rock, there you go. That is the 2022 NRL Grand Final provided for you by me. Uh, $1.37 for the Penrith Panthers, who did win the Premiership last year against the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Um, obviously, last year, it was kind of an even money game. You had... I remember a lot of people wanted Benji Marshall to go out as a, a premiership winner and those type of factors were just lowering those South Sydney odds. But Parramatta have been pretty firm at that $3.10 price. They were once at $3, but they're back out. So let's talk about the battle between uh, Dylan Edwards and Clint Gutherson. This final series, for me, I think Gutho has probably outdone Edwards in regards to the consistency of form. However, I think that Edwards on the weekend really did shine and he was probably one of the best players uh, of the round. On the wings, an interesting one, Talon May is out. How fitting for the Penrith Panthers, uh, not next year, it's it's now that he's out. Uh, so Charlie Staines will be on the wing for this game uh, up against Mike Acebo. So I think we can answer that battle for ourselves. In the centres, you've got Isaac Targo, who's been... Uh, one of the rookies of the year, in my opinion, he's been very underrated. He hasn't been talked about. I think Jeremiah and I deserved it, getting it last night. Um, but he was probably a shoe in there for mine. Going up against Will Penasini, another great rookie centre. who's had a fantastic season. I've been a bit criticism on Will Penasini this year, but I think he's had a fantastic season. Then you've got Stephen Crichton, who uh, obviously scored the match winner in the grand final of 2022, going up against Bailey Simonson, who played last week for the Cowboys. Uh, Brian Toto going up against Wonga Blake. Hopefully Wonga Blake can hold on to his lollies uh, on the night. Jerome Luai going up against Dylan Brown. Uh, both these 5'8s have been in pretty good form this year. I'd argue that Dylan Brown has been in better form. Uh, Nathan Cleary, obviously in the seven jersey, he tore us apart in week one, whether it be those bombs or the try assists at home. Good crowd, and Nathan was getting behind it. And then my man, Mitch. Now, I won't touch too much on it, but we all know why Mitchell Moses was a little bit off last week. And to be under that pressure, we've spoken about this 36 years of a number seven jersey, um, and Mitch just did a great job. Even though he made some errors last week, he did a good job to get back into the game um, and with what was going on off the field as well. Um, Props to you, Mitch. Speaking of props, uh, our number eight, Moses Leota in the eight for the Panthers, going up against Regan Campbell-Gillard. I actually had Regan Campbell-Gillard as the prop of the year over Payne Haas last night, in my opinion, but we're not here to talk about a robbery. Uh, number nine, Happy Coruscant, who I think is the form hooker of the competition. A lot of people throw Harry Grant in there, um, but I think it's Happy Coruscant. Going up against Reed Marnie, who's been inconsistent, but still good. 
He's in a grand final. He's been waiting for this moment. I interviewed Reed Marnie uh, after the uh, it was after the Panthers game, I think, and I said, "Are you looking forward to your final five weeks with the club?" And he said to me, "Shut your mouth! I've got nine weeks left with this club." And here we are. Reed Marnie was right at that moment. Then you got James Fisher Harris going up against Junior Paulo. It's one of the best battles of the field, in my opinion. This one, it's they've both got offload ability. They both get plenty of meters. Uh, then you got kick out the back rower of the year. I I disagreed with it, but anyway, going up against Sean Lane, who in career best form, people are saying he's going to jump on that plane and head to Australia uh, for the oh, sorry head to England for the World Cup. Liam Martin going up against Isaiah Papalihi. Isaiah Yo against Ryan Madison. Then on the bench, I think the Panthers probably have a more consistent bench, if I'm being honest with you. But you've got Mitch Kenny and Nathan Brown being recalled for the Parramatta Eels. So a bit of uh, grit and mutt with Nathan Brown. It's a great in, in my opinion. Scott Sorensen, he's had a fantastic season. He did last year as well, but he's had a much better season, more complete. Up against Jacob Arthur, who probably, let's be honest, won't get on the field. Um, but we'll see if he does. Spencer Linu up against Oregon Kafusi and Jamin Salmon up against Murata Niakore. I'll start with you, Norman. Who from those teams, probably pick one from each team, who would be your player to watch on the night? Player to watch, Parramatta, definitely Dylan Brown. I think Parramatta need to feed him some early ball. Um, he's really elusive in attack. I like what he does. Off the ball, he's probably been the most, I'd say the best defensive six in the comp to be honest with you. So in, in defense, he always turns up. And in attack, he just needs early ball. His side in the attack is so lethal. Um, Penrith, obviously everyone's going to have their eyes on Nathan Cleary. But um, to be honest, Dylan Edwards, he's the standout. He's just the player to watch. He just breaks out of every tackle. I don't know how he does it. Um, we interviewed him last week. He doesn't know how he does it. He just manages to do it. And if you can break out of that many tackles and make the meters you make, you know, you're bound for success. What about you, John? Out of those those two teams, which uh, player would you say is the player to watch? Well, I'm going to take uh, Dylan Edwards. I think, uh, you know, he's my Smokey for Clive Churchill medal. Uh, he's been a, a freak all season, goes unnoticed. I'll probably disagree with you. I think he's been better than Gutherson all season in terms of, like, consistency. You know, players have come and gone for Penrith in and out, and he's been there. Uh, really can't follow his game anywhere. He's always on autopilot. Covering, covering his position at fullback and really runs their right side attack. So I think uh, I think if he has half the game he, he did last week, he'll probably be Clive Churchill medalist. So I reckon he's in for a big one. Absolutely. Hold the ball. Yeah, look, for me, um, I'm going to go with the Eels here. I think Reed Marnie off, you know, hooker. Um, I just think he's been sensational this season. What he does, I think he's really gone unnoticed as well. Similar to Edwards, obviously, you got to, plethora of other names there as well in the hooking position who somehow just look better but I, but I think in terms of consistency I think Reed Marnie for me defensively sound, offensively knows how to manage the team attacking wise, brilliant player and uh, he's my smoky action for the, uh, the church I'll tell you what, hold the ball, you've taken the player right out of my mouth my, uh, my player to watch is Reed Marnie the thing about Reed Marnie is I mentioned he's had a big season but it's been there's been some moments where he probably thinks he, he could have performed better, uh, but then he's also had some man of the match performances, but he's physically come out and he says he loves taking on those bigger bodies, tackling your Joseph Tarpanes, who was obviously one of the props of the year, those bigger bodies. So for players like uh, James Fisher-Harris and Moses Leota, if Reid Marnie's getting to those players really quickly, then obviously, as you mentioned, he's your smoky for the Clive Churchill. And for me, he's a player to watch. And you boys, you've summed it up perfectly. Dylan Edwards, I think, as I said before, John, I think in the final series for me, Gutho's been better than Edwards. In the whole season perspective, it's been Edwards by a long shot. Uh, and I think he's another great choice for Clive Churchill. I actually mentioned this about eight weeks ago. He was $21. He's now into about $7. I think he's second pick behind Nathan Cleary. But um, let's touch on when these sides played last. So, Look, we can speak about the trial game as well, but I don't want to get too much into the trial game. So we'll start with, I forget, I think it was round number nine. Uh, we had come off a loss 35-4 to four to the Cowboys. Everyone was riding us off. I remember that Parramatta players literally had posters in the change rooms of Panthers players and of those moments of them sitting down 
crying. When you go to the stadium, um, it had this different feel and this promo about the game against Penrith and them sitting on the ground crying, those scenes that we saw last year at, I think it was Mackay. We obviously beat the Penrith Panthers, 22 to 22 point victory at Penrith. And they that was the first time they had lost a home game in three years after that fantastic record as well. For me, I thought Ryan Madison was absolutely the game changer. You mentioned it before, Norman, Dylan Brown. You think that Dylan Brown is in for a big game this weekend. Do you think that he can replicate that form that he did at Bluebet Stadium? Yeah, I think he can replicate it. But I think with Dylan Brown, he's a player... Even though he stands up individually, he needs the team to perform at the same time. And I think like early ball is so so vital for someone like him. Like when you get when he gets early ball, he can do anything. Give it a short main, go himself, even put a little cheeky kick in there. Like we've seen him do it time and time again. He'll he'll definitely step up for the occasion. Um, in terms of that game though, that was incredible. And I remember that um, I got a few mates and a lot, a lot of my cousins actually support the Eels and they were messaging me saying, this is our year, this is our year. After that, I'm like, I've heard this for the last 10 years. But to be honest, I, I believe that, you know, Penrith haven't lost at home. They haven't lost in general for so long. And to see that happen, it was incredible. So, yeah, I think Dylan Brown can step up. And if if they start the game in the grand final, how they started that earlier in the year, it's theirs to lose. I'll go with you for this one, hold the ball. Uh, Do you think that Parramatta can replicate that kind of form? Uh, Obviously not revealing your tip yet, but can they replicate that kind of form and can they take much confidence out of knowing that they've beaten Penrith even coming off that kind of finals loss at the same very stadium? Yeah, look, the way I look at it, um, out of all the teams that I think Penrith Panthers probably don't want to verse, I think it's Parramatta Eels, um, to be fair with you guys. They've just, I don't know what, on earth it is, but they just seem to grind well against Penrith Panthers. I mean, granted, we're talking about the last time they played, but I mean, generally speaking, they've, they've just been able to sort of meet them at the same intensity, go better than them. Um, and again, talking about players, Dylan Brown seems to really shine against the Penrith Panthers. Can they meet them? They absolutely can, in my opinion. And um, I think, uh, again, we're just in for another good contest. But yeah, definitely for, yeah, they absolutely can. They, they absolutely can. What about you, John? Do you think that Parramatta's win at Penrith, regardless of that finals result, does it give them much confidence or does it give them that worries that that was so early in the year? No, I think they they know that they can beat them for sure. Uh, they've done it twice this year. Like you said, you're referencing the first time they beat them. I just think it's it's a grand final any given Sunday. They, they've just got to get up for it and match Penrith's pack and they know they can do it. So in the back of their mind, they're thinking, yeah, we can beat these blokes. We've done it before. So... I'm, I'm keen to see. I think it's going to be a close game regardless. Well, let's speak about the second time they met. Now, a lot of people disagree with something I say. Um, with this game, it was obviously 32 points to 10. It was a victory our way at Bank West. And Nathan Cleary sent off the field, obviously the game-changing moment of that match. Let's not forget that Parramatta led by eight points before Nathan Cleary was sent off the field. So Parramatta, as you mentioned, hold the ball. They play that grittiness. They grind them down to their level, and they were turning that into points. I still remember a play where Nathan Cleary tried to kick a 40-20. He missed it. He made a few good metres, and Mitchell Moses, that play, kicked a 40-20, leading to a try. I forget who it was from. So do you think the fact that Parramatta have put in that huge scoreline gives them confidence that they can not just win 1-12, to but potentially win 13 plus? Or do you think they're at that mindset of playing that simple footy rather than that razzle-dazzle that we saw at Bank West? I'll go to you for this one, John. I think they, they know it's going to be a, a grind of a game. I don't think it, in, they personally think that they, they're going to blow them out. Uh, if, if Penrith play the game that they've been playing in the finals, which is just complete the set. And, and you saw Mitch Moses last week when uh, he was interviewed after the game. He mentioned that, you know, the reason why they stuck in the game is because of their completions and then their defence on the back end of the game. So, yeah, I think they know they don't need to throw the footy around too much, really complete the set, stay in the grind of the game and then convert when they're in good ball, when, they, when they're when they in the um, opposition half trying to score tries. I'll go to you, Norman, and we'll speak about when we met in week one of the finals, 27 points to eight in favour of the Panthers. A lot of people 
I guess it was kind of a, a 50-50 game in a lot of people's mind. A lot of people were tipping Parramatta. A lot more people um, were tipping them then than they were this week. Now, I've watched this game a couple of times. I really have. And up until this game had 17 minutes to go, Parramatta were losing the game by five points. And the first thing I said when I first saw them is that they're going to struggle because of the play the ball ability. They were playing the ball slow. There was a lot of issues for me in that game on the night, but they were still able to hang on there with the scoreboard, almost went into halftime with the lead. How much do you take out of that game? Obviously, you lost Mitchell Moses and you were blown by that score. But the fact that you weren't playing your best footy and you were competing with a team that's minor premiers and been so dominant for so long, one, do you think Parramatta could have won that game because they were down by five points? And two, what type of confidence does that give them knowing that they can be in that grind of, of less than six points? Yeah, great questions. So into the first one, look, it's tough. I don't think Penrith are ever going to lose first week of finals at home. I, I thought from from the moment they kicked off, they were going to win that game. And that's no, but like no disrespect to Parrot, doesn't matter who was bossing them that first week, Penrith were going to win that game. Um, the fact that it was such a close game and with Mitch Moses going down, it shows the grit in the defence. And it's such a cliche to say defence wins premiership, but it literally does. So if... If they know without their main man, they struggled to attack, but they managed to hold the line and actually hold out Penrith until the last, I think, 15 or 13 minutes to go, and then it was blew away from memory. To hold them out for that long was very impressive. And, you know, it'll, the floor will be a bit, like, it's definitely a bit slippery. It's going to be raining this weekend. The defence is going to be super important. I think Parramatta are confident in their attacking ability. It's just now, can they'll be saying to themselves all week, can we defend like we did for the majority of the match? Even early in the season when they met, they defended so well against Penrith. Penrith were like smacking on the points against every other team. And then Parra outscored them twice during the year. So I think they'll back their defensive ability based off that finals game. Um, yeah, I think I think they'd be confident. I don't know why. I, I guess we're going to probably talk about the odds later when we give our tips. But I just can't believe. I know I knew they were going to be outsiders, but not, not by this much. I think it's a bit of disrespect to their, um, to their defensive mindset. Hold the ball. Be honest. Did you watch? Did you watch that game against the Penrith Panthers? And who did you think was the kind of trouble man for the Panthers? For me, it was Viliami Kikau. So, is there a player that you think you've mentioned you play to look out for there? But a player that Parramatta have to contain that obviously reflected that scoreline towards the end that you can remember from that Friday night at Blue Bet. Yeah. Look uh, for mine. I, I thought it was um, either Kikau or I think it was uh, Nathan Cleary. I thought kicking-wise, he was quite sensational. Again, putting pressure on Walker Blake as one of the high bombs. Unfortunately, we know how he can be under those bombs there. Not the most reliable player. Um, yeah, I think it was, if anything, you just got to really zone into Nathan Cleary. Don't let him run right, because if you do, it's it can be quite over very quick, I reckon. John, I want to talk about the inclusion of Nathan Brown. Now, obviously... Nathan Cleary's kick pressure was a big issue. We had no kick pressure on Nathan Cleary all night. Do you think that the bench has made the right decision to name Nathan Brown after three months of, of kind of being out to apply that kick pressure? Or do you think he's there just to kind of provide that rest for the forwards? What do you think that purpose of him being named is for? Yeah, I think they realised last week uh, – in, the, in these long-winded games, these grind type of games, they need another forward on the bench that's going to relieve your big boppers like your Junior Paulos and Regan Campbell Gillards. And he's just going to get on and do a job, pressure the kickers, go out there, cause some damage in defense. Uh, he's decent with the ball as well. Uh, I just think, yeah, he's, he's going to give him, give him a good breather and bring some aggression and match up physically with Penrith. But ultimately, the wrong decision for the bench that I think is still having – Jacob Arthur in there because, like you said, he didn't get a minute last week and it's a waste of a sub because, like you said, the, the Penrith are a team that are going to play the full 80. Why wouldn't you want an extra forward to carry on the bench? I know that Mitchell Moses can go down and halves can go down, but Penrith, Penrith's bench, I think, I'd give the edge to Parramatta's bench just based on, uh, you know, who's coming on. But I, I think it's a, it's just a waste of a sub having Arthur on there, and they'd be more better. They'd have more benefit going with the extra forward. 
Yeah. Well, let's let's get into a little bit of a tip. We won't go to our grand final uh, for the NRL just yet, but we'll go for the New South Wales versus Queensland, the winners of their cups. Obviously, in Queensland, it be the Norse Devils. Congratulations. And the Penrith Panthers, who are playing in the NRL grand final, they're also uh, in the cup grand final. So Panthers versus North, it's an interesting game. Norse have gone uh, back to back. They're my Queensland club. Uh, a lot of family legacy, which I'll speak about in a different video. But a lot of people think the Panthers are huge favourites for this game. Um, their defence against the Bulldogs was not great. They conceded uh, 22 points last week in their win. So, look, I'm going to go with Norse here. I'm going to go with a bit of an upset. I know that it's in New South Wales. I know there's going to be a, a Panthers crowd behind them. But I think Norse have a few NRL stars mm. just like your – uh, Penrith Panthers side, they've got a few players that have played those big games. I think it'll be a high-scoring game, so I'm actually going to go with a scoreline of 32 points to 20. What do you think for this game, Norman? Yeah, I'd have to disagree with you there. I'm going with Penrith. Um, their system's just way too good. Like, Kurt Fawes, Sean O'Sullivan in the halves, they can steer the ship around. Like, they're just too good. North Devils had a great season as well. Um, I, I actually, I support... I don't watch too much of the reserve grade in uh, Queensland, but got a bit of a connection with Burley. So um, I've always supported the Burley Bears. But North Devils, great team. And look, they've made it this far, but Penrith, they've dominated at every level, every level of rugby league in the state and um, in the country too. So this will be another one where New South Wales get on top. Um, yeah, just, just purely because of how consistent they've been this season. And to beat that Bulldog side and also the North Sydney Bears, who had a, a pretty good year actually, um, just the fact that they beat both those sides, I'm like, look, they're going to go all the way this year. Uh, in terms of actually putting a score to it, I'll probably give it 28-20. Ooh, so we're both going high scoring there. What about you, John? Yeah, I'm going to stick with Norman and go with Penrith too. I think they're, like you said, too, too good of a development they've got down at, at Penrith. And I don't know, I think there's a little bit of a divide between the best clubs in New South Wales and the best clubs development in in, in the Q Cup. I've actually got a, a an old uh, friend of mine who I used to play with. He's played for the North Devils this season. Um, so I don't think he'd like this, but I think, yeah, Penrith will be too good. They've, the, the the first grade experience that they have in the team, I think they'll run away with it. And I think it'll be something like, yeah, 24 to 24 to 6. Ooh, okay. What about you hold the ball? Do you give North a chance? Uh, no, nah, especially after beating the Dolphins, no way. Look, um, for me, I think um, I'm just going to, yeah, side the boys. Yeah, I think personally, you know, just again, Penrith Panthers, what they're doing, I want to side with them. Um, yeah, that's it. That's what I'll say. Fair enough. Let's move into the second game, which is at 3.55. Uh, before we get some entertainment at the venue, we're going to get the NRLW uh, grand final. It's the Newcastle Knights who were winless. Um, in my opinion, their coach probably should have gotten coach of the year to turn this team around to win pretty much every game this season, uh, all but one, and be in a grand final. But then you got Parramatta, which it's crazy. They won no games all year, and then they won their final game against the Broncos, and now they are in the grand final after knocking off the Roosters, who hadn't lost a game all season. But I'll tell you what, their loss to the Titans and even the Knights was a very close game when these two teams met. It's only two points of difference, and this has been incredibly hard for me to tip. It's been incredibly hard for me to tip, and I wonder how many Knights fans will be at the grand final getting over the line. The Knights, for me, they're probably the more complete team. They've still got some young players who haven't been in the type of positions for the big games before. And then you've got players at Parramatta like Samai Matorfa uh, and Kennedy Cherrington. So I am going to tip... Parramatta by one. I'm going to tip Parramatta by one. I reckon this will be a very close game. I'm going to go with a scoreline of 19 points to 18. And I'm going to tip Taylor Preston at $21 to win the medal with a field goal. Norman? Yeah. Well, look, I hope that wasn't a bit of biased opinion there because even though the Parramatta girls have been good the last couple of weeks, they didn't start the season too well. And I feel like Knights have been so consistent. No one tipped the Knights to really make the finals. Um, I know you know Entertain House that uh, we we tipped them to finish in the top two and make the final. So the boys are sports are happy that they're there. And to be honest, with, with Millie Boyle and Caitlin Johnson leading the pack, 
they're just, they're just unstoppable the Knights to make up in the back. Also, their halves, um, Kira Dib and Jesse Southwell. I think it'll come down to the halves and the way that they can move the team around the field. I think Knights win and win well. Um, with the Eels, like when Ken- Kennedy Jenkinson comes on the field, I know she's listed to start this game, but she might come from the bench. She provides a lot of impact. And I feel like that's when the game gets tight and they get on the front foot. Also, their fullback's incredible. So I see Paris scoring a couple of tries, but um, with maybe 15, 20 minutes to go, Knights will pack it on. I reckon 30 points to 14. And I'll go Millie Boyle to be the uh, woman of the match. John? Boys, I'm going to be honest with you. I have not watched a game of Women's Rugby League this year, unfortunately. I caught a bit of the Dalliams last night. And I, I've seen uh, Charrington on TikTok, so I'm going to I'm going to favour the Parramatta Eels here. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go Parramatta Eels. I'll, I I'll, I could flip a coin between them, but yeah, let's go Parramatta Eels one to twelve. And what about you? Hold the ball. We've got uh, two Eels picks, and we've got one Newcastle Knights pick. So let's see here we goes. Yeah, look, uh, similar to John as well. Um, can't say I've been watching too much of the NRLW. Well, look, and saying that, I think I'll stick with the Eels here. Um, I reckon probably, what, uh, 12 points to 8. 12 points to 8, close game there. Well, should we get in the main match, main match, boys? We should get into the 2022 NRL Grand Final. After you all get to watch Jimmy Barnes, the pre-show entertainment on Sunday night. Um, are we all going? Obviously, hold the ball. It's pretty tough because you're in South Australia over there. But uh, John and Norman, will you be at this match? Yeah, I'll be there. I know Norman, you'll probably be floating around too. Um, if Para win, I'll be floating around with the Para fans, probably back to Church Street. But yeah, it should be good. Yeah, there'll be some big drums, just like uh, Townsville, if you saw last week's vlog. It was absolutely huge. Look, we've spoken about our players to watch. We've spoken about the meetings and we've spoken about Parramatta being that team to trouble Penrith. Before I get into my tip, This is a segment I've come up with. I would like to provide you boys. I did have eight. I've now got ten. Some of them are stupid, but these are ten facts as to why Parramatta will win the comp. And some of these you may have heard. Some of them you may have not. So sit back, relax. And for those who are in the comments, yes, this is live. So don't make me choke this. But in 1986, the film that was the highest grossing film was Top Gun. Here we are in 2022, 36 years with a sequel, and that sequel is Top Gun Maverick. The second one, interesting one here, the last team to encounter a 36-year drought was the West Tigers in 2005. Not only did they win the comp, they won the comp from fourth position, which is where Parramatta finished in 2022. Brett Kenny, the 5'8 for the Parramatta Eels in 1986 in the regular season scored 11 tries. Dylan Brown has 11 tries in 2022 in the regular season, replicating uh, those results from Brett Kenny. Out of the five times in the NRL era, so we're talking 2000s onwards, uh, where two sides have met twice in the final series, three times out of the five, the team that lost the first final has then gone in to win the grand final. We saw that last year with the Panthers uh, losing to Souths in a bit of an upset, and then Penrith obviously won the grand final. I'm going to save that one there till last. I'm looking at it and I love it and I'm saving that till last. Uh, In 2011, 2012, 2014, 2018 and 2021, and you guess what all these years have in common? Every team that won the grand final lost to the West Tigers in the regular season. So a few teams have won the comp after losing to the West Tigers, including last year, Penrith Panthers. In 1986, Parramatta lost eight games in the regular season. Here we are, a grand final, 2022, eight losses. Stupid one here, but coming full circle, our Neighbours aired in 1986. Here we are in 2022, and Neighbours has now aired its final episode in 2022. So little one there. But the one that I love, this one will, boys, this will drive you crazy. But in the last eight occasions, where a prelim has been played at ANZ, the team that didn't play at ANZ seven out of eight times has gone on to lift that trophy. So Parramatta, they played at Townsville, they played at Queensland Country Bank, seven out of eight for those stats there. So look, I've got my jersey on. I'm ready to get behind the boys. We're all ready to provide our tip. 
and I'm going Parramatta. And I'm going Parramatta by six. Now, I think Parramatta will struggle early on. I think that we will score the first try of the match. And I think there'll be this moment where I don't think we'll let them out to a kind of eight to 10 point lead, maybe a six point lead where they might score two tries after that. And I think the momentum over half time, the mentality of being in the sheds and being down is going to get these boys fired up. I'm going to back Isaiah Papalihi for first try scorer. He's paying $26. He did it off a, a chip uh, into the in goal against Penrith just a few weeks ago in at the Parramatta game. So I'm going to go with him. And I think Viliami Kikau has a slight shoulder injury, a very slight one, but he has one. So I think Isaiah will be running at him all night. Uh, I'm going to go with an anytime try scorer. I'm going to back two here. For the Panthers, I think Isaac Targo. Now, the reason I think Isaac Targo is I question Simonson and Wonga's defence on that wing. It's been pretty solid from Wonga Blake for the most part all year, but there's been question marks in the past. So Isaac Targo at $2.45 is my pick for an anytime try scorer. And then for Parramatta, I'm also going to back Mitchell Moses. I mentioned that off-field decision. You've seen that short kicking game. You've seen that running game from Parramatta. So for Mitchell Moses to be paying $6.75, that is huge overs. Um, I'm going to chuck a multi. I'm going to chuck a multi, which is Papali'i, Targo, and the Eels to cover 12 and a half line. It's paying $45. Huge, huge odds uh, for that one. I actually agree with Hold the Ball that my Smokey for the Clive Churchill medal is Reed Marnie. He's me making those tackles against those big men. Now, the funny thing about this, and it's not going to happen, but John wants it to happen, is obviously if Reed Marnie does win the Premiership this year and then next year with the Bulldogs, he's the first player since Cooper Cronk uh, to do that. So that would be pretty cool. But for me, at $12, and I've never called him by his nickname I think Monday morning I will be calling Clint Gutherson, King Gutherson, as I think Clint Gutherson is going to win the Clive Churchill medal just due to some big plays, some cover defense. And I, I reckon he won't even score a try. Gutherson not to score a try, but to win the Clive Churchill medal. And Parramatta are going to win this game 22 points to 16. Norman, take it away. <laughs> it's funny you say that because I've got um I've got Gutho to get the Clive as well. Um even though I said Dylan Brown's a player to look out for, I think Gutherson will win the Clive Churchill medal. I, even if he doesn't score a try, to be honest with you, this is like probably super bold, but either of the fullbacks will win Clive Churchill, depending on the team who wins. I'm backing Parramatta. I know the majority of the country was backing Penrith, and rightly so. They've been there, done that. This is their third grand final in a row. Um, you can't say they've cruised in there, though. It's, you know, it was tough last week. I feel like... The first half hour was shocking. And if Toto doesn't score that try at ha- going into half time, and Rabbitohs come out and score first, I don't see Rabbitohs losing that game. Um, early on against Para, you know, in, in week one, if Moses doesn't go down, it's probably a closer game. I still see Penrith winning, but I think the game's a bit closer. And, you know, if you want to go into it as deep as your, your 10 random facts, which was uh, pretty entertaining to listen to, if you want to go deeper into it, in, in 2020, they beat the Roosters by one point in the first week of the finals. And they, they scored off an offside try. There was a bit of talk about it at the end, um, but they, they won by one point. They went through. Then they went against Souths and they, they, um, they scored and they won by four points. Then they choked in the final against Melbourne Storm. Now, I don't know if you guys know what I'm getting at here, but then in 2021, they lost the week one to South Sydney. Then they beat Power by two, controversial with the trainer stopping the game and Power should have had a penalty at the death. Then they beat Melbourne Storm by like two points. And Melbourne Storm had a one-man bench and lost Brandon Smith and Christian Welsh inside 15 minutes. Then they go on to win the comp from an intercept try. Penrith, they deserve everything they've had, but I don't think they've ever played a finals game where they've been convincing enough to be like, look, this is ours to win and we're going to win it. So I feel like if the right Parramatta team shows up, they're going to get the chocolates at the end of the day. And they've done it twice this year. I know regular season is different, but as Hold the Ball said earlier, there's one team that Penrith don't want to verse. It's Parramatta. Um, I've got Parramatta winning 20 points to 18. I've got To'o as my um, first try scorer. So Brian To'o, I just think it's the, the most consistent side in the comp. Taylor May, he's obviously not playing, but down his edge, they scored a lot this year. Um, probably more than To'o has scored. But I feel like when it comes to the big games, you need the big players to step up. And he's definitely a big player um, at this point in his career so far. So I think he'll score the first try. It's safe to go down his side. 
But I do think Parramatta then um, win back the middle of the game. And, um, yeah, 20 points to 18 and Gutherson, Clive Churchill medal. Um, one last thing before we move on to John. I just want to say something about um, teams in the grand final. The Dragons in the 90s, when in that period where they made like three finals in a row and they um, they didn't manage, they, they went one from three in terms of getting getting the ring. The Roosters in the 2000s, three finals in a row, only got one premiership ring as well. Melbourne Storm, most dominant side in the last decade. They've won three comps across 11 years. So they haven't managed to do it in succession and, you know, to be to be there three times in a row and come out, come out like two from three, it's a very, very tough ask. And all the pressure is actually on Penrith. Can they go back to back? The Roosters went back to back. All right, big deal. But can Penrith do it? Penrith are going to be a powerhouse club for the next 10 years or whatever. Well, it starts now. You lost in 2020. Yeah, you won last year, but you lost the year before. If you back it up this year, it's okay. If you don't, it's all of a sudden the narrative is Penrith build this incredible squad depth, but they're one from three. Are they chokers? So pressure's on Penrith more than it is on Para. When a team wants it that bad, they might get it. Look at Souths in 2014. Well, let's see. Well, John, you're a Bulldogs fan. Let's see if a Bulldogs <coughs> fan can tip their rivals in the Premiership. No, mate. Unfortunately, I'm going with what the majority of the players last night at the Daly M came to the consensus of was Penrith Panthers are going to be too good. They've been there before. They're going to go back to back. They know they've lost one. They've won one. They know what it takes. Uh, I think the stage will probably be a bit too big for for Parramatta. It's, I think it's going to be a close game. I don't, I don't think it's going to be a blowout. So the multi that I've put together, along with my brother Nick, who we put out our best bets every week, is Penrith head to head, not not by a margin. Parramatta plus eighteen and a half. That's an alternate line. I think that it, it's going to be a close game. I think it'll be definitely a one to twelve game, but I'll give it that extra cushion of of plus eight and a half into Brian Toto anytime try scorer. Really anyone on, on Penrith's left side could be Kikau, could be Targo, uh or, or and I've gone with Brian Toto anytime. That gives you a collect of four dollars. Uh not nothing too crazy. But if I wanted to swing for the fences, which I will be doing this weekend, I'm gonna take Dylan Edwards uh to be a Clive Churchill medalist. I think he's he's flown under the radar. People want to give it to him. You've had pundits like the, the GOAT, Andrew Johns, say he's been one of their best all season, probably won't be one of the best players in the NRL to not get a representative jumper. Uh, I think Cleary could definitely go back to back with the Churchill, but Parramatta are going to come out hard against him. I'm talking pressuring him, having the likes of Nathan Brown on there to cause disruptions and really attack Cleary throughout the whole game. And uh, I think they'll lean on Luai and, and Dylan Edwards. I think he's going to get your Clive Churchill medal. That into Penrith one to twelve will give you twenty dollars, so I'm going to be taking that as a as a big swing for the fences, and yeah, I, I, as much as I I want to see Para break the drought, I, I just think Penrith is going to be too clinical. They're going to grind them out throughout the whole game, uh, and it'll it'll come close. Uh, uh, my score prediction will probably be something along the lines of you know twenty four to eighteen. All right, this will decide the match. Hold the ball. It's over to you. Yeah, look, um, there's no doubt that both these teams here, yeah, I suppose, have a bit of story, right, regarding this game coming up here. Obviously, the Eels as well. 1986, the last time you guys won a premiership, so there's a lot hanging on here. Um, look, for me, pure and simple, I'm going to – look, uh, it's actually a pretty hard tip for me, but I'm going to be tipping the Eels here. All right, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back them. I'm going to be going with the underdog story that, you know, that, that team just – that doesn't belong there, but they are, right? And I think that's the way I view the Eels. Um, in terms of any time try scorer, look, for me, I'm going to go for uh, probably just go with Isaiah Papali. I think, again, he'll be sniffing around there. He'll be there, thereabouts. Um, as for the Clive Churchill, I guess for me, I'll be going with, uh, you know, as I said, you know, Reed Marty for me, for my Smokey. But besides him as well, I think uh, Dylan Brown, I reckon. Um, also, I just want to, like, sort of, if I was to look at both teams, and I sort of ask questions. I think mine for the Eels would be Nathan Brown. You know, does does he do anything silly? You know, that 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 costs him. You know, does he get sent out? I'm not too sure. And um, for the for the Paramount, uh, sorry, for Pinner Panthers, I think it's also, you know, does Luai sort of go silent and then Nathan Cleary end up just being the driver there? Because we know when that happens, Pinner Panthers do struggle a bit. So again, that's just what I'm having there. But for me, yeah, definitely, I'm going to back uh, Paramount Eels to. Uh, do the unthinkable, and as a Warriors fan, you know you just got to go with the underdogs. So bring it on. 
I hope you're right. I hope you're right. And I hope you're wrong, John. But good luck with those bets. They are some fantastic odds. Obviously, I mentioned Dylan Edwards a few weeks ago. I backed him, Clive Churchill medalist. But that was before we were in the grand final. But looking forward to this grand final. We hope you have enjoyed our grand final preview. Just quickly, make sure you go and check out Sports Share TV over on TikTok as well as Instagram. Make sure you go and check out John Bernard Carus. No more TikTok, no more numbers. Uh, there's plenty of more great content. Um, lots of very funny stuff. So make sure you go and check it out and hold the ball over on YouTube. But boys, thank you so much for jumping on the channel tonight and uh, go para. Thanks, thanks for having us on. Yeah, go para for this week. I'll probably never support para again, but definitely for this week. Thank you yeah, so much. For us on. Best of luck. Best of luck. Enjoy it, mate. Thanks, bro. Let's do it. Thank you.